Hello everybody, really welcome back to my channel. So for today's video, I am going to be doing another DIY video for you. These are actually three pieces that I've got from Poundland and I have been working away on these for the past three or four weeks. If you do notice a nail change, that is why I just finally finished them up for you today and I thought I'd get this video out ASAP rather than just wait around. So I do have another DIY video like this coming next week, which will be like fall, autumn inspired, which again is Poundland related items. So all budget friendly so yeah without further ado I'm just gonna stop rambling and get straight on into the video so for the first DIY, I actually ended up using some of these frames, which I had left over from my Poundan farmhouse inspired mirror quite a while ago now. I still have like 15, 20 of these frames left over. So I thought today was finally the day that I was going to use them. Anyway, so what I went ahead and did was took apart the frames. And as you will notice on mine, I don't have the glass inserts because obviously they were mirrors. I would recommend getting the ones with glass inserts rather than not, just because you won't have to cut up some folders and put them in to use this plastic like I did but that's a great tip if you don't have any glass in your frames just use some plastic recycled from somewhere else. So I went ahead and wrote out some words on the word document and then printed them on the A4 piece of paper and then cut them out and stuck them on the backboard of the frame. I did this so I could get them in the exact place that I wanted them and then I put it back into the frame so that I had the back and board with the text on and then the plastic on top. Once I had that I then had the perfect kind of you know text to draw around and trace so I could get really nice freehand writing so I went in with some Posca pens um, a white one and a black one to start off with and I just traced out all of the letters so I did this on all three frames giving them different kind of words and stuff and actually this frame kind of three piece was inspired by one I seen on Pottery Barn's Instagram so I actually just copied the words from that because I loved it so much I then went ahead and painted all the frames in Hessian by Rustoleum in the furniture chalk paint and I like I said I did all three frames in that and then I wet distressed them with a wet microfiber cloth just to give a nice rustic feel. I then started putting all the frames and stuff back in order so obviously the bit with the writing on and then the backing boards and just assembled them and I then attached all of the frames like you know next to each other using some hot glue. I just hot glued down the sides and then hot glued along the back. I know some people do stick lollipop sticks and that sort of stuff on top of it, but actually my frames were so lightweight that this held them perfectly. And they've been like this for about a month now and they still haven't fallen apart. So I'm kind of happy with that. Um, a few bits of my distressing kind of like matched up on two bits. So I actually just went back in with some pain and distressing and back and forth until I had a really good balance. Once done, I then put them in my kitchen and this is how they turned out. I'm absolutely in love of how the white writing looks on the white background. I think it just looks so nice and I'm really happy with how it turned out. So for the second DIY, I actually used these two spice jars that I picked up recently in a sale haul from Palman. I've been meaning to give these a tiny little upcycle. I thought about painting them white and putting roses on like I usually do in my little jars, but I thought I would do something different today because on the shelf that I wanted these to be. I already have so many jars with like white chalk paint and little pink roses on. So anyway, I painted them all in the white chalk paint, like I said, and then I went ahead and just used a little kind of paper punch and punched out some craft card little, um, I don't know what you call it, tags. Um, I then used a little hole punch just to punch two little holes in it to actually make them into little tags. And I just went ahead with a black Posca pen and wrote out the words Diamonde and also metal findings because that is what I wanted to keep inside the jars. So once all the white chalk paint was dry for the first layer, I then put on a nice thick second layer and left that to dry also. Once dry, I then assembled the tags onto some twine and just wrapped them around the neck of the jars, hot gluing them into place. So 
so once the jars were then painted with the tags on and stuff you can just leave it there but I actually wanted to really distress mine so I went back in with a microfiber cloth which was slightly damp and I just rubbed and rubbed until I had loads of like distressing and just like a worn look to the jars so I made sure to do this all the way around underneath the tags and everything like that just to expose little bits of the jar and then I just filled them up with whatever I had to fill them up with so like I said I had metal findings in my anthropology mug for the longest of times and I've also had these little bags of diamantes kicking around so it was just perfect to put them into like just their own little containers so the diamantes one i filled up with these iridescent diamantes obviously and then i took the metal findings out of my anthropology mug at last so i can now use that mug and i filled up the other little jar with that so they turned out really 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 simple but i'm actually really impressed with them i think they look so sweet and i've just popped them up onto my desk and there they are that's what they look like in all their glory <laughs> so for the bird and final diy this is actually another really simple one but again it is really effective i actually just took this leftover um table runner that i had left over from a previous poundland diy project and i saved the other half just because i knew i wanted to do something else with it so i just took a cardboard heart and then i drew around that on one side of the fabric and then on the other so that i was left with you know two hearts i sewed around that on my sewing machine just using a normal straight stitch really really simple and then i just cut off all of the excess when cutting hearts you do want to make sure you will get into like that v of the heart at the top as well as getting straight to like the curve as much as you can you want to put in little snips just to help it to turn the right side way around because otherwise you end up with like an angled heart and nobody wants that so once I had most of the fabric removed, I just turned it the right side way round and then I lightly stuffed it with some polyfill stuffing. When I stuff my hearts, I do make sure to get down into like the rounder bits of the heart first and then I do the um, like point, making sure to get really far down into that and then I just fill out the middle at the end. And then poke the fabric bits inside and then just do a simple ladder stitch up the side just to give an invisible stitch which often just seals the deal to be honest it does make all the difference doing a ladder stitch rather than like an over like stitch and all of that i then decided to glue them together so i just used some twine and i glued one bit on a long bit of twine and then one heart on a shorter bit i then glued two little bows on just to disguise where I had glued the twine down onto the heart. I then tied a little knot at the end just so that I had a hanging hoop so I tied it into a knot and then over and then I tied the longer piece of twine around to create a loop. Hopefully that makes sense. Probably doesn't but I made a hoop in the end. You can obviously use one piece of twine and just like glue each end and then tie a knot in the end but I didn't think of that at the time for some reason. So yeah, this is what the hearts turned out like on my little cottage door. I think they look perfect hanging on the door handle. I love the contrast in, in fabric, like I said. I just, I think that the colours work so well together and the patterns as well. It's just bringing a nice little touch to my quite plain door. This is what the back looks like, just the same as the fabric on the front. I think it just makes it look so complete and I'm really, really happy with how this one turned out also. So that is the end of today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. I know all three DIYs were really simple, but hopefully it will spark a little bit of inspiration in your mind and just inspire you to get crafting this weekend. Um, I do have another DIY video coming next week. Um, hopefully a haul, maybe even a vlog, that sort of stuff kind of coming i'm not really sure um but yeah hopefully this channel here is going to be more of a home lifestyle vloggy i don't know just basically me in a channel without all my cute stuff which is on my other one um what else do i have to say not an awful lot <laughs> so yeah i hope you all have a fantastic weekend maybe get crafting if you do let me know um i'm loving speaking to so many of you on my instagram so i'll leave that down in the description down below so please do make sure to follow me on there tag me in your stuff that you're making and that sort of stuff because i'm really loving having some chats with you over on there on dms and just in the comments and stuff like that i've just chatting to so many of you it's so great so yeah hopefully i will see you very soon for another video and that's it that's all I got. <laughs> I'll see you then. Bye.